Welcome back to my channel. Now I've got a little vanity unit that I'm having made in the factory, but the top for it, I wanted to do as a live edge top. So I particularly like using live edge. I like to go down to the mill, pick up a bit of timber. It could be any timber. I mean, as long as it takes my fancy and um, create something from it. So I like to find something that's been cut down maybe for a couple of years, maybe been ripped out of the log, if you like, for at least six months. So it's got a little bit of stability to it because the moisture content is generally high for live edge materials. So I found a lovely bit of beach. I'm gonna cut it down and basically prepare it, which is a very easy job. I've got a straighten one edge, cut it to length, so remove both ends, shoot it in, drill through for a big enough hole for the waste and just prepare it and let it dry out. So then I'll leave it in here until the actual cabinet's produced. The cabinet will support it. And then the bowl, it's like a granite bowl, will sit on top. So it's a really nice bit of material. So I'm gonna get on, go and get it out of the van, bring it up and start cutting it down. So let me show you this granite bowl over here. I have the granite bowl, so it literally just it is a bit of rock and it's actually gonna go in this room here. So it's gonna be positioned on this wall here. There's some services coming through there, so hot and cold, and there's a waste pipe in there as well. So they'll be re rearranged and brought through exactly where we need them once we've got the unit here. So I'm gonna go down, get it out of the van and bring it up. Oh, it's a heavy old thing. Probably weighs half as much as me. Okay, here she is. I'll just punk her down here, gently. There we go, good. Lovely. Here is the top and it's got this really interesting face edge on it as well. It's got a nice little top, it's got a couple of knotty defects there, but I'm actually planning to sit the sink there. So we'll lift the sink over and have a look. Now this end, there's a little bit of worm. So we're gonna get rid of that end quick, cut it off and give it a really good coat of woodworm killer. But I wanna get rid of that. But you can see there's some evidence here. Not sure whether it's still going or not, but it's best to actually treat that as well and get it out of here as quickly as possible because there's lots of nice timber in here that I do not want to get woodworm in. So there it is. Let me get the bowl and I'll sit the bowl on top. So there we have it. Imagine this bowl sitting somewhere on here. I mean, isn't it just great? Two really beautiful natural materials, a rock from the earth and a tree from the ground, if you like. So yeah, we just got to decide which way around to face this, pick the most interesting side. I haven't got to decide that now. And at some position there'll be a tap. I'd imagine it's gonna to be to one side just so the top can remain slightly narrower. So there we go, I'm gonna get the dimensions work out what I'm going to take off, try to leave this lovely bit of interest here. So that's it, next job, trim it all up. Set my tape up here and have a little look at what we've got. It's a nice wide vanity. I'm going to centre this in the middle, I think that's ideal. At the moment, 600 is in the middle of where this bowl is. That's where we've got this nice bit of figure, that's the widest bit. I don't think I, need, I really want to take this any further over unless I try to make that bit there, which sticks out the most at 600. Let me try and see what that looks like there. Bring that over. I think actually it's not, there's not a great deal in it. That would come along to there. That wouldn't be too bad either. Let me have a look at it from a distance. I think you've got to just take a, take a view on these things and have a little stand back and look. I mean, it's like a piece of art. And um, yeah, I mean, I quite like the way that contours around there works really nicely. Let's try and spin that round. Try it around another way. There. Something like that. Yeah, not so keen on that. I think there's only one way to go and that's the other way. So have that back round there. Obviously I won't get the last say. There'll be a certain lady who has the last say because she has a much nicer ride than me for interiors. So um, yeah, let's just finalize a position it's got to be here, I reckon. That looks good. We take that as the centre, mark that there. Centre, take the bowl away. That'll be perfect. 
The first step in the process is to straighten the back or take the back off. So all I'm going to do is get my rail first. I've got a really nice long rail here. So let's make the most, let's make the most of that. And we'll pop the rail on and we'll use that to set everything out. So I can actually get that as close as I can to these edges so I don't reduce or so I don't waste any material. I know where my center line is, so that's the center. As long as I've got some cover and I'm not cutting into that edge, I'm absolutely fine. So I can bring this one round right over to that edge there. And that gives me the widest possible plank here. So let me just bring you a close up of that because then that might be quite helpful. I'm actually cutting a lovely edge off there, but you can't have it all. I've marked the centre line on where I want my bowl. And then down the rail, I've just marked half the distance there and half the distance here. And I've lined those up with the edge where, where I can take it off. Now I can always reduce it more, but I want to try and make sure that I leave it as wide as possible to top for now, ready to um, square it up if you like. Once. I've cut this off all the way through. Then I can use my roofing square to set it nice and square back into the corner. I'll cut that off a slightly bit longer. Then I'll shoot that in as well into the corner. And then I'll probably cut the final length. So I'll make it slightly longer. Then I've got a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of play to cut it down. Let's get the rail saw fired up and cut it. As I'm making something particularly nice, I always like to start with a new blade. Now I've got a blade here, which is actually intended for laminate. So although it will rip, you just want to make it, just take it a little bit steadier with this. But the reason I'm using this is it'll be absolutely beautiful for the cross cuts because I want to cut through the face um, and it will give me a nice finish. This is a Freud blade. I mean, this will, this will definitely do cross cut and ripping, but it is intended for some of the laminates that I use. So it does a lot less chipping as well. But I, I mean, you can use it for this. It's a luxury to be fair. So first thing is whip the other blade out, pop that one in and get myself set up. It might be wise to do this sort of thickness in two passes as well, especially if it's got a fairly high moisture content because that will ultimately put some strain on the saw and the blade. So we'll give it a go in a couple of passes, especially the one on the back. We've got a tiled up stand going in eventually. So this edge here, you know, it's not, it's not as critical as one of the side cross cuts that we're going through. Even the one on the wall is not so critical. The one on the end is obviously because that's a finished end. So swap this out quickly, obviously not plugged in. In fact, I'll take that plug out of the way. It's a good thing about the Festool rail saw, you can do that. You can whack that out of the way there. Then when we, when we change the blades in these, we pull up this, we slot that down and it automatically locks out to the distance of that little nut there. You can pop the Allen key out. It's automatically locked off, loosen it off. Oh, that's better. Right, so that's it. We'll swap this out. I like the um, Festool, you can do this, sort of set it on its motor at 45 degrees, it just feels quite natural. Alternatively, you can actually rest it on its side there, which is quite useful for not losing that collet there or the restraining washer. And then, without turning the blade the wrong way around, easily done, I've done it before, believe it or not. We just want to slot that in there gently, so we don't damage any of the teeth on the riving knife. Slot that on there. This has got two lugs on it, which locate there. So it's not just a clamping ring, it's actually located. And then that small screw that goes back in there, little machine screw there, tighten it off. Don't need to over tighten it like last time. Just give it a little turn. That's it. And then gently release that little lever there because it wants to come out real fast pop that back and this is ready to rock. So we'll set ourselves up, a bit of dust extraction and we will put our first cut through there. Pop this out of the way. I've got this table underneath, which I made when I built my house for doing plasterboarding, believe it or not. It was just the right size for me to stand on top and scoot around. But it's been the most useful kind of portable 
workbench that you can imagine. It's super lightweight, made out of an old piece of OSB. This was the bit that I had a temporary door in the house. So it's super handy when you, when you get something like that. So let's take a rip all the way down. As I say, I am going to do it in a couple of passes. I don't believe in um, overworking the saw and it's not a ripping blade. It's more of a fine blade on there. So even though it will handle it just fine, we will take it nice and steady. If this is 40 mil, we'll do 20 and 20, set the blade at around about 26 because that allows for the bottom, the rail. So we'll go 26. Let's clamp that on. I always feel much happier when the rails are clamped to anything. It's just a habit now because I have had the odd mistake when I've been trimming a door down and something moved or it just pivoted on something. And the next thing you know, you're off the line. And because we don't mark a line, because we rely on just a mark at either side. It's so easy to slip without even knowing it as you're pushing that saw through, get to the other end and think, crikey, I've made an error here. But anyway, we're only human. That's it. Now this has got quite a flat top. It's been through the planer. I haven't got anything to worry about there with regards to um, slipping. So here we go. That's good. And that's the bit there. That's my center. Let's see how that copes. That felt amazing, considering it's got so many teeth, that blade. It really did feel good. It feels, felt super smooth. I can just see the, how sharp that cut is. So I'm gonna finish that cut off now. Just gonna make sure, yeah, I was a good halfway through there. So I'm happy to go all the way through now. I don't wanna to cut too much into this OSB because there may be a rogue screw somewhere. So if we just tickle that down to about 42 and see where that, I'll start off and check it. So that looks really nice. I mean, that is just the, the cleanest, nicest car. I mean, you know, you, you could put a bit of 180 grit over there and you're absolutely perfect. So that blade is be beautiful to be fair. I will do the cross cuts now. So we'll unclamp the rail and we'll get him out of the way for a minute. We don't, we need a shorter rail now. That's why I like having one of these long rails because there are times where if you're trimming the side of a, a door, piece of joinery, a long panel, it's ideal to say he's putting the little ones in. So here's my center mark and here's my dead straight edge. I'm gonna take my, my framing square, let's add, add 10 millimeters on there. So that's where I'm gonna take my square. Now that's the beauty of a framing square. It's a lovely bit of kit. You can just set that dead against there. I know it's so accurate, so true. And then sight that through. And that's what we're gonna take off. Don't need to mark it all the way across because I'm using a rail. The rail's nice and straight. We'll pull the board back on so it catches the off cuts, it doesn't fall off and snap that lovely bit out there. So let's find the small rail. So this is an 800 rail, standard size. It's lovely for doing small doors, things like that. So I'm just gonna set that on there. Because it's only short, I probably won't bother clamping this one because all my weight is down here. I'm not gonna rock and roll pivot. And again, we're gonna do that in two passes. So we'll set that back up to 24 first. And we'll go for that. We'll make sure our dust extraction is switched in the on position. Then we'll set us up to exactly where we want to be again, down to about 45. And we're going to go for that again. Now, 
if for example you're putting it through and you want to check where you're at just with no power set your blade down into the cut run it through and that will actually get the make sure everything's nice and true and straight in case this did move because I've not clamped it on because the clamps won't reach without rocking it so now I'm going to go all the way through Now, I'm not joking you, but that is like glass. I, I mean, I'm not, let me, let me show you about turning the camera off. There's no fakery here. There's no trickery. This edge is like glass. And look at the face, look at the top side. Now, this is the side where the rail wasn't holding it down, the grain. It's absolutely perfect. Now, this is the face side, normally with a circular saw, the blade is cutting up, you'd want to cut from the other side. In fact, I think there's less chipping on this side than there is on the other side. So that is like glass. It is so worthwhile investing in a really good quality blade. Tungsten carbide tipped, plenty of teeth. And look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. All I have to do to that is literally give it a fine sand. So. Although this is an edge against the wall, I deliberately did this to see how the saw would perform for the actual end, which is going to be exposed all of its life. I'm going to take a measurement, although I know what it was from my book, my little book where I write everything down, I'm just going to actually check it. So I've got around about 12.25, four feet in old money. Um, I wanted to keep it just back from the edge. I think it's always nice to have a little bit of breathing space between the edge and there. Um, and so I'm going to keep it back to 1220. Now I want to make sure, because I'm putting a tile splash back here, the tiles need to stop somewhere with a brass trim. So if I actually bring it um, too far back, it's going to look odd if the brass trim stops and there's a strip of plaster. So I want to bring it to a point where there might just be a silicon joint down between the brass trim that holds or contains the thickness of those tile splashbacks, if you like. So they'll just be, everything will line through. So I think we'll stick to 1225. We'll go and mark that on. But before we do that, we'll bring it in and shoot that corner in over there, the one that I've just cut, just to make sure we can trim it with the saw at the moment, or we can say, yep, yeah, that's good enough. So this piece here has got no worm in it at all. So that'll make something, might make a nice chopping board. Beach block chopping boards are quite popular, but it's the end grain sticking up normally. Anyway, so let's get that. We're gonna cut it slightly longer to allow a bit of a, a shooting off there. So if we just make it 1300 for now. So we're gonna get rid of this worm. In fact, if we go to 1250, that gets rid of that worm. We'll square that off as well, using the framing square straight on the back. It's just, you cannot beat that for square. So we've created a lovely top based on one straight line and a square there. Pop that out of the way. Cut this bit off and I'm gonna send it straight outside because this was the bit with the holes. Move this all around. Have I'm here for a minute, pop my rail over there. Slide everything that way. Pop that on there, blast that off. Two passes. Back down to 24. Put my rail on, dust extraction in. Fire it up. Okay, and away we go. Right, let's get rid of this piece with the worm. Pop him out of the way. It's quite amazing how those little woodworm do the damage that they do. They just go straight in and start eating away. So yeah, it's important now that I probably give that a really good treatment. Once I've finished cleaning it up like this, because it's not going to be fitted for a few weeks, I'll give it a good couple of coats of woodworm killer before we do anything else to that. Right, so let's try that in, shoot that in. The idea is I'm going to bring this in, I'll just pop it on this hop up for a minute, and I'm going to check the corner fit. So I want to height roughly where it needs to be at about 800 
So if we just put a mark here at 800, here, and balance it against the wall. So I've left it long on the length, and all I'm doing is checking how square I am against the wall, and it's absolutely brilliant there. So this is all nice and true. There's not a lot I've got to do with this at all to make it fit exactly right. The corner where the plaster is has got a tiny little round over. So what it is, is as the plaster goes into the corner, sometimes it gets a little bit thicker. So it kind of, there's a little bit of a gap there. You can see it curves. So it's the slightest little bit I'll take off there. That will give me the exact fit against there. There will be a sealant joint around eventually anyway, but it's nice to get it somewhere near close. It's a tiny amount. It's just where the little bit of plaster was just coming around the corner. It's quite often the case, you know, as a carpenter, you know to look for that. Whether it's a bit of skirting, a panel, you know you just got to allow a tiny bit on that corner. So that's what we need to do now. Let's cut that off dead square where we want it now. And this is the final cut. We know it's a beautiful cut. We've seen it done twice now. Rail straight on. So this is roughly what we're gonna look at now. You can see the proportion here. Here's a lot more sensible now. So there's the bowl, that's the overall length. That's the overall width. There's a cabinet which is being made to fit directly underneath it as well. So it's gonna look super chic. I'm not gonna do anything more with it now. All I need to do is, um, I'm gonna give it a couple of coats of um, Five Star, which is sort of woodworm treatment, and just leave it to dry somewhere where the air can get to both sides of it, because it's still got quite a high moisture content. I would say it's something around about 30%. We wanna get that down eventually to 18%, something like that. So I bought it in good time. I've got about four or five weeks. That should make a big difference with the moisture content. Um, once I've actually coated it with some stuff to treat that little bit of woodworm, then I'll be able to leave it in here where the temperature's good and the air flow's really good as well. So um, if I keep it upright, so the air goes either side of it, then it'll be fine. It'll dry out equally. What you don't want to do is stack it flat on the floor because it will just suck the moisture out of one side and it just could crack or cup or something like that. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It was mainly about showing you how I'm reducing this top down, this bit of live edge. If you're wondering how much this piece of wood cost me, it was around about 150 pounds, okay? So um, probably you might think that's a lot of money, but you know what you're getting is something which is gonna look absolutely beautiful as well. And th what made it nice and easy was using that really good quality Freud blade there, you saw the finish was like glass, you know, it was absolutely amazing. So um, I just think that, you know, that blade will go on and on and on, it will do loads more work, probably all the second fix work that we've got here, we've got loads of um, end panels to shoot in on joinery, uh, tops to cut down, that would be absolutely perfect. So um, I, the only thing I did differently, because it's not a ripping blade, and I did that long rip, did it in a couple of passes, because this is quite moist, as I say, and it's quite thick. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, just check that, click that subscribe button because then you can see all the other adventures that we get up to in carpentry, joinery and building.